dodgers, knives, swords, batons, survival, spy, and tactical gear. Mention this ad and receive 10% off your order. Visit MrDefense.com. That's MRDefense.com or call 1-800-313-6400. 1-800-313-6400. That's 1-800-313-6400 today. He's the T-Rex of political talk. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. All right, we're back live. Um, We just got confirmation. Alex Jones will be with me at one of these shows this weekend, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know which one. But you're not going to embarrass me calling me up there. And then oh, I, like, like Doug Stanhope did that crazy night? I and then, and then some guy, then some Marines started a fight with me because... Well, you, uh, got, you got really into it, and I think they were expecting a comedy show, and you just started going crazy about the New World Order, and, <laughs> and it got a little ugly. <laughs> well, I mean, Doug's like, come Doug up here. Called I didn't want to go up. Doug's like, come up, come up. I'm like, man, I'm not going to do comedy. I had to listen to his message three times because he was laughing so hard while he was leaving the message describing you going on stage, what happened, all the chaos that ensued, and you know, how you were up there. You were on stage for like a while, too, right? Yeah, about 20 minutes. That's right. You even did uh, the man show with him. You've done everything. Yeah, I've done a lot of dumb stuff. <laughs> now you've done well, Lord Vader. Uh, Lord Vader, whoa. So yeah, I'm the uh, evil guy? <laughs> no, but... Uh, now, there were some troops in the front row, and they didn't like me being anti-war. Well, you know what? I mean, troops never want to hear that. They, You know, if they're risking their life going over there, they want to think that it's for a noble and just cause. And, you know, in that sense, you know, their actions are heroic. But I just don't want more problem, coffins coming back. And, sure, of and, course. And, and a million and a half dead Iraqis. Well, not, not only that. I mean, the whole idea of war in this day and age, it's a shell game. You're taking one leader, a, a leader of a group of people, and saying that he's going to protect them from... Uh, another group of people that's wielded by another leader. And the U.S. put Saddam in to begin with, told him to invade Kuwait. Well, I mean, the whole conflict and resolution thing, the the way it's set up, it's almost like there has to be war. There has to be problems. If there isn't, there's no way to keep control of the entire population and keep them from assimilating into one gigantic mass. I mean, that's really what people are holding back. That's it. The the ability to communicate with everybody and the ability to think of all of us is just... Just brothers and sisters on this planet, just fellow human beings. Instead of playing us off against each other. Exactly. The playing us off against each other, just going off our basis fears. I mean, that's what military and that's what government and leaders have been doing since the beginning of time. It's just, it shouldn't work the same way now as it did when there was no communication, there was no internet. It's like now that we have the ability to spread information so quickly and you know, in that sense you're you're helping that along. You're you're helping put an end to that. I mean and, and eventually it will be that, you know, you can't trick everybody. We will have so much access to information, it'll be impossible to convince someone that there's some people on the other side of the planet that have never seen them, never met them, and that they hate them for their freedom or some other retarded idea. Well Zabig Brzezinski in his grand chessboard book, Obama's top advisor uh, 97 said we built a world government but we can't get our people to go take over our enemies anymore because they don't see foreigners as their enemies so we've got to hype that up in the media i mean they admit all this and write books about it the whole idea behind government the whole idea behind you know governing human beings has got to change you know well we've we've got to realize at some point in time as we're evolving you know human beings are evolving and right now we're in some sort of an adolescent stage of evolution you know i think we're devolving right now well you know that's that's always coming along with it is because it makes it easier because when you make life easier for people and you don't make them develop discipline and skill they can just drift through life like a retard there's a lot of people that will just do that on instinct that's another lazy. thing that's another thing I mean talking about you Joe while you're here you also have been big into martial arts yourself and train with uh, a lot of the people in, you know, in ultimate fighting don't you well I, I do martial arts and I think that for for your thinking, for to just just to manage your biology as a man, I think it's very important to have control over your your system, over your biological system. And I think one big uh, a big effect on a lot of people's life is stress. Just stress from being stuck in traffic, or your bills, or non, or just male stress. Just natural. I mean, we're designed to chase things down and 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 
beat on animals and stuff. I mean, that's what we're here for. We have a certain amount of energy that we need to expire. We need to express. We need to pump it out of our body. And if we don't do that, it's very difficult to manage your emotions, manage your thinking, to think clearly and calmly. And exercise is the best thing for that. For I know, I need to do more of it. The best tool for just clear thinking and you know just objective thinking. It just it, it drains your body of all the unnatural stress and allows you to look at things in a, with a more even keel. I agree. Let's shift gears back into politics because you've been very interested uh, in this uh, Glenn Beck clip. And we played. Well, I was fat. I mean, it's because it's about Ron Paul, really. I mean, Glenn Beck, like I said, I think is an interesting talking head, but he doesn't say anything that leads me to believe that I want to listen to him. He just says, hey, well, when he's, uh, when he's talking, it seems to me the, a guy who wants you to believe that he makes sense and wants you to believe that, you know, he's uh, a sensible man looking out for you. Yeah. And to me, he seems like a showman. He seems like some oh, yeah, ham off. and egger, apple pie douchebag. I mean, that's what he well, seems no, I, like. I mean, it does come off as. Uh, as, a, as kind of a hokey pitch, or as a three dollar bill, I want to play part of this clip in a minute so you can hear it. But but first off, uh, your view of Ron Paul? Well, I think he's the only guy that's saying, "Listen, we need a radical restructuring of our government," and he's absolutely correct. And he is what a, a real conservative is supposed to be. I mean, by all stretches of the imagination, I mean that guy's a, a, a real. I mean, there's there's no way you can say by any stretch of the imagination that he's not a conservative. I mean, he's a real conservative, a fiscal conservative, a social conservative. But he wants people to be able to do whatever they want. He believes in states' rights. He believes that the federal government is completely out of control, that it's too big. He believes that, you know, we have to uh, uh, get rid of the IRS. It's a flawed institution. He believes we have to get rid of the Federal Reserve. He believes all these things that totally make sense. And when he says these things on TV, they laugh and they make it like it's a joke like even though we know that the system is completely it's just completely unfixable i mean if, if you look at the way it is now just it's a honeycomb of of corruption and 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 just a bureaucratic bs and red tape and it's just god it's well, that's so what I was gigantic about. that's my next question let's continue along Ron it's Paul. a business the government is a business and we need and at this the way this world is structured it's almost like we need that business to keep running in this ridiculous manner and it's in order predatory. to keep people working like yeah. a drug war it's predatory. it is predatory it, it, it feeds on other people i mean look the, the whole idea behind private prisons i mean that's completely insane that people can profit off of other people being in jail well if that's the case then they're going to support things that make more people and they do jail. they lobby to yeah. keep somebody caught with a marijuana cigarette in prison making right. widgets for them um you're right they do and it's in, it's sickening it's like cannibalism i mean it's it's really like a social form of cannibalism it's unbelievable that it's legal and that's all stuff that ron paul you know what what he stands against and any rational reasonable person who would listen to ron paul talk goes well here's a guy who obviously understands the system was calling the economic collapse way in advance 30 years ago yeah i mean he's He's a brilliant, brilliant guy, you know, and I mean, he says a lot of stuff that I don't believe in. Like, he doesn't believe in evolution. You know, he thinks that evolution's a theory. But the point is, he isn't going to make you believe what exactly. he's... Exactly. And he isn't going to make exactly. you be... Exactly. And that is a true, a true conservative, a person who's not... You're, he's not a, a person who's trying to manipulate other people's lives or change them or or bend them to the no, will of No, he wants the state to, uh, to get off people's backs so yes, they can be themselves. Exactly. And that brings me to the next issue. George Bush campaigned to cut government, to not have foreign adventures, to not have wars, but his own documents that have now come out, PNAC, show that was their plan all along. That was a betrayal of, of, of true conservatives that, that, that drank the Kool-Aid thinking he would reverse what Clinton did. Right. And uh, then it was far worse than Clinton. Uh, now, now with Obama, Bush tripled the size of government. Now Obama's saying he's going to expand it even more. He's saying change is even bigger government, bigger state, but the people coming in and these youth brigades and, and, and 18 to 24, and it's now on the White House website for service, but it's a domestic draft where you do stuff for the government domestically. That's 180 degrees from, uh, from the Bill of Rights, the Constitution. So segueing into that, uh, what do you think of the change, and it is change, more of the same, but uh, of Barack Obama? Well, I'm definitely apprehensive of a bigger government, no matter what. I mean, a bigger government, to me, sounds like more possibilities for problems, but... Uh uh, a, a bigger government that's not this government, you know. I mean, maybe, maybe what he's going to do will add to it in a positive way. Well, I, I tell you, I he's know. totally on the bank. Uh, I mean, he is the man of the bankers. He got the banker takeover bill, which then they bait and switch and didn't spend for what they said. And now they're saying the money's secret. I mean, he. I'm just telling you, Joe. And remember, the, the, and I know you're a smart guy. The day of 9/11. 
the day of 9 it sounds condescending, but I mean, really, I know you can grasp this. Most people can't seem to. The day of 9-11, I came out and said, it's an inside job. Here's the evidence. You were on the air with me. I remember. But I mean, I you know, this. I don't just make things up. I've got just reams of evidence. Obama is probably going to end up being like Adolf Hitler. I mean, I'm saying, I'm saying, if you think Bush was bad, prepare yourself. Uh, really, you really think that he's going to? I mean, but I know he it. seems to be so uh, socially liberal, and it seems like he wants to close Guantanamo Bay, and he wants uh, to. Uh, 